Welcome. I'm your host, Dustin, and I have a co-host today who is... Also Dustin. From the Flicks and Friends podcast, and we're joined today with Michael Terrio. Many would know him as uh, Dr. Folly of Cult of Chucky, um, Nathan Cross from the uh, Chucky TV series, and sort of other characters on there as well, and many other TV shows and movies. But today, we're here to talk about his character, Gil, from Here for Blood. Michael, how are you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, Dustin, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. How are you doing? I'm I'm great. It's been a long week, but I always look forward to doing these shows and talking to amazing people like Michael to talk about these films that I love. And I said this for the last two people I, I interviewed, which was James and Sean um, for this of, I think this is, you know, it's the beginning of the year still. So uh, it might change, but this is my favorite movie of the year, and oh, the year great. just started. Oh, that's great! It's Dude, this, nice to be here. This it's movie ripped so hard, man. It was so good. I loved it. It's so James is a really funny writer. Like I think his his writing is so so good. Like I remember when auditioning for this, I, I, the scene was making me laugh, and I, and I just thought I just really want to be a part of this. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's I agree. It's it's a really well, uh, cleverly written show. Yeah, it really is. And before we start diving into everything you're doing now, what I always like to do to kind of get everybody to know you a little bit better and for myself to know you a little bit better is to kind of go back to the beginning of where everything started for you with with acting or anything else that you did. So at what point in your life did you decide or feel acting is what I want to do? Well, uh, I was quite young. I, like I was like grade six or so. Um, and back then it was like the eighties and there was a TV show called fame that was on. And I, I remember thinking there's gotta be a school like that. I live in Toronto I pulled out the phone book, which doesn't exist anymore. And, <laughs> and found two schools in, <laughs> in Ontario and wrote them and they sent me their stuff. And I said to my parents, can I go there? And they said, no, cause it's like an hour and a half away. And, um, anyway, uh, when I was in grade eight, a kid in my class was going and I hitched a ride with them and went and I got into these two schools and my parents again were like, no, it's too expensive. It's re like really far. And I was a really tiny, shy kid. And they were like, you're going to get killed. Uh, trans getting there. And uh, my principal somehow, I, know, I was like a super shy kid, somehow met with my parents. I don't know how that happened. Talked them into it, found all the funding for it. And then that changed my life. Wow. Yeah. It's one of those kind of crazy things. I've never been able to thank that principal because like I literally was so shy. Like I don't even know how he even knew, uh, and, uh, but he somehow got word of it and and made it happen. Yeah, it was wow. amazing. She That's funny too. And then from there, I got an agent from my school. Like it all just snowballed from there. Wow. Yeah. Saying that you were shy as a kid and now seeing where you are now of all the things <laughs> that you've done, you've definitely you know, outgrew that. And now you're in a lot of things and everything that you do, I think, is it's pretty funny. There's a comical you know, aspect to things that you do. And also there's a serious side of it. Um, and I don't know, everything that I've seen with you in it has been super enjoyable. Um, people oh, say, you know, Colton Chucky, you know, this fans have been this fan, uh, not fans of it, but it's enjoyable nonetheless. And then, you know, seeing the Chucky TV series and seeing you in that again, and then seeing you in this is, is astonishing. It's, it's awesome. Oh, okay. um, but, um, you know, going through, you know, going to school and picking up um, TV shows, was there anything before, I want to say this, this horror bloom for you? Was there anything that you was really into at the time that you like, this is like the type of genre that you feel more comfortable in. You know what? The horror thing is all a big surprise because I, I was afraid of horror film when I was, you know, in my teen years and kid, I didn't watch them. Like I, they, they scared me and, uh, uh, and I didn't want to be scared. <laughs> so I, I uh, yeah. So it's a bit of a surprise that I've, been doing a lot of work in this genre and i it's and it's fun now i i particularly like the horror that has a bit of a comic slant to it yes um and i'm lucky to be you know get to work with writers who write like that and and projects like that think about that but um uh um yeah, it, it wasn't something i'd set out for i you know my my career started i was actually 
um, on a path to do musicals, really. Wow. And then I went to uh, the, the Stratford Festival, which is like a rep company here uh, in Canada. And I went there and doing music. You do three plays there. So I did a musical. I did a Shakespeare and a, and a modern play or Italian play. And the artistic director and uh, just took a liking to me. And I started just doing Shakespeare, out of, like in classics for like seven years. Um and then when I got out, when I, I left there to do a musical in Toronto, and people were like he does musicals. We had no idea. We thought I just did Shakespeare. And and then I I got a, a job in Canada. There was a a mini series about uh, uh, Tommy Douglas who created um, who created healthcare in Canada. Um, I didn't even know who he was. Like he was a politician. He be, he was a minister. Became a politician. Created healthcare, which we now still enjoy. Uh, I, I wish you had the same. I, I know you. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we did. I did a. Uh, I got. I played him in a three-hour miniseries about him, uh, and that changed. Then all of a sudden, I was a TV guy. Like it completely changed things. So my career had a lot of surprises to me. It went very strange in different directions. Um, yeah. And I think the horror thing really is because of Chucky. Then, um, and then I just started getting hired more for that. Oh, wow. That's, that's yeah. really cool to hear, you know, how much you progress through that. Musicals is one thing that I've started really getting into, um, as of late, cause there's been a lot of plays near me that have been turned to musicals. Um, there's one that I'm seeing next week. Um, which is the the Evil Dead musical that oh, I'm yeah, super, yeah, that super excited for, a while. Yeah, for that. Yeah, um, it's so good. Fun. Yeah, so I'm really, really excited for that. And then that's kind of just bloomed me getting into more musicals and, and watching movies with musical elements to it. Because myself, I'm a musician at heart. Um, I grew up, you know, uh, playing drums and guitar and being in bands and everything. Um, so music has always been like a big part of my life and horror as well. Um, so to know that you have a background of being in musicals and now you're starting a new background and horror is, is awesome. Um, but Dustin, well, I'll the, let you throw a few questions uh, as well. Cause I know you have a few over there. There well, is I just wanted to, on that note. Um, sorry, Dustin, but on no, that note, gonna... there are, you know, there are musicals you'd probably enjoy that, that are darker like Swinney Todd or uh, oh, uh, yeah. shop of horrors or, you know, that, 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 that play on darker spook your themes yes yeah. yep yeah I, I just want to touch on the musical thing man like growing going through high school i was in a construction class that we built sets for like uh funny thing happened on the way to the forum oh yeah Su Suzical, the musical hello dolly like i've built uh covers for pits so i've been in the musicals almost my whole life man but trying like to piggyback off that beetlejuice the musical is probably oh, I one of the best one, one of the here. best ones i've seen uh so so good but yeah, I just wanted to chime. I just wanted to ask, um, with your newfound horror, I didn't know you from Chucky or Cult of Chucky. When I seen you in Here for Blood, I was like, he was in an episode of Cabinets of Curiosity. That's right. Yeah. And <laughs> I over here on the Flicks and Friends, man, we love Gamil Del Toro. Like he is just he's a genius. And I need I wanted to know, like, did you ever did you get to meet him while you were working on that show? I didn't, unfortunately. Um, Shit. I know he was around, but like, I, yeah. I, I never saw him. Uh, you know, he, I, he was, uh, I think, really respectful of each director of each of those movies and left them to their, you know, oversaw it from a distance, but let them do their thing. I think he, because he curated that mm -hmm. whole series and handpicked each director, I think he wanted them to do do what they did best. And, and, and um, so I never saw him, unfortunately. Wow. But I, but I you, agree, he's fantastic. But you did get to see Peter Weller. <laughs> I did. I did. What was it like working with Robocop? <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> it, you know, it, yeah, he's uh, he's interesting. It was uh, it, that was such an an interesting experience because most of the movie was all of us sitting in a circle, which is mm -hmm. really unusual for any kind of filmed thing. Y you know. Um, that sounds more like a play, Do you know, yeah. like one set people sitting and talking. Yeah. But most movies is it's not about the words. It's about the visuals. Mm -hmm. So um, you're changing locations a lot to keep it interesting. So that, that, that was quite an, uh, an interesting uh, experience. Cause also as an actor who has a, you know, a role in, in this machine, usually come in for your days and do your stuff. And you might not even meet the other people. So 
um, uh, you know, he was an interesting guy. He's a musician, so he always had an instrument around. Like I think it was like a saxophone or something. Um, he has lots of stories about kind of old Hollywood. You know, like it, it's amazing how things have changed, though. Like you know, his I don't know if this makes me sound like a, a jerk or not, but 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 his um, heyday kind of uh, it was a very different kind of the sure. world was different. You know, there wasn't so yeah. much so. Yeah, I, 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 it was neat hearing that perspective and going, "Oh, that things really have changed." Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, RoboCop serenaded y'all. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I would, you know, be happy with life after that, man. He has quite an incredible voice. His speaking yes. voice is God, so lead. Like, you know, you wish. I wish. I was going. I sound like a teenager. I wish I had that sort of. Movie. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, but that audition was interesting because. Um, when I, I auditioned, they 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 wanted a British accent, and then I call back, and he said, "Okay, do like he wanted four different types of British accents." And I was like, "Oh God, do I even have that?" Uh, so I was trying to to figure that out, and then we went back just to the one sort of what I auditioned with, but 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 it's neat when you audition for things, you don't know what it's going to be. So I auditioned in a suit, and I was sort of like being a like I was imagining I was a rich a rich snotty guy and then when <laughs> i had my fitting it was like hippie clothes and i was like oh this is not who i thought he was oh okay i'm gonna rethink this so he became slightly different than when i had auditioned with because it didn't because that was all new really cool information I mean, he was an amazing amazing designer but it, i remember sort of going oh this is how do i fit this now this is so not what i thought it was it's so interesting and That's that happens cool. all the time costumes will completely maybe make you rethink what you thought you were going to do yeah sure yeah that's one aspect i really like about hearing people talk about acting or in roles how they have like this vision of who they think they're going to be um portraying as because on paper you're reading something so you just have the lines there and then like oh yeah. here's your uniform and here's your set so now you're actually seeing what it looks like and like wow now i really have to go and redo everything now but i think that that idea of like having to shift your mind, like people like you, Michael, who are actors, who are able to do that, to shift your mind into a different space, I think that alone is pure talent. I don't know if I would be able to do that. You oh, know? <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. I think you I think anyone can. You're just playing pretend, right? Like, like don't undersell yourself. I mean, everybody's got their <laughs> imaginary world, and you just kind of go, okay, let's what does this make me think about? Um, sure. You know, um, here for blood, it was interesting. I I thought the designer for that did a great job too. Like when I showed up, you know, there was that pink shirt and which like is all very soft and you know, Gil's really pushed around. And I thought, oh, that's actually really wise. Like Gil's kind of getting dressed up, but he also uh, it's a soft look, which also makes him seem like a pushover. You know, uh, it adds to the feeling of pushover, like trying too hard to be cool, but maybe overdoing it. You know, um, yeah. That was a kind of a neat choice. I, I uh, that was a nice, a nice, a pleasant surprise when I saw that that shirt. I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that film yeah. is amazing, and I want to lead up into that. But um, one thing I want to ask, you know, kind of easing you and the audience into um, your newfound background of horror, is getting into the Chucky universe and family. So, how did that kind of come about? I guess starting with cult of chucky mm -hmm. yeah so i had an audition for a film it wasn't called cult of chucky it was called something else because it was under a pseudonym i didn't know it was chucky at all uh and i you know the thing was an actor you get these sides and you don't really get the whole story so you kind of have to guess what you think's happening mm -hmm. and you audition on tape and you send it off I go, I don't, I don't know. Was that the right vibe? I don't know. And, and, and I got the part, which was amazing. And then I found out it was Chucky and I kind of couldn't believe it. And I called all my friends and said, I can't, I'm in a freaking Chucky movie. But the one of the <laughs> nicest memories of that is um, Don Mancini called me at home and said, I just want to say welcome to the, to the sort of family and uh, really look forward to being with you. And I, I, I said, I, I, a director has never done this. Has wow. never called me at home ever to say welcome. He goes, well, you. I think you'll find people in horror are actually really, really nice. 
I was like, yeah, I think I'm already finding that out. <laughs> and they really are, especially on Don with Don Mancini, that that group. Um, Don, I mean, Don is such a kind, like thoughtful, easygoing person. Like that I feel like uh he sort of sets the tone of kindness, you know. Uh uh you 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 kind of meet when you meet him, you're like, you're the nicest person. How do you come up with these horrible, horrible deaths? But uh but uh he's uh yeah he's pretty great and 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 you know here for blood was a really fun set as well like everybody was having a lot of fun laughing a lot i i think it's also when you're watching people and things are happening like blood and stuff it is funny like it's supposed to be scary but you know you're like oh yeah that's so gross but it's awesome you know you have yeah. that sort of geek, that kind of fun halloween this in it you know uh which is it's fun yeah Yes, it is. Uh, Dustin, yeah. if you have anything else to throw into the pile, go ahead, man. Yeah. Uh, how massive of a human being was Sean Roberts? He's pretty big. He's pretty <laughs> he big. just seems, yeah. he he seems big. massive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a couple of those guys are even bigger. Uh, oh my God. I forget the character's name, but there's um, one of the... I, I I just forget everyone's name. It's just... I, I It was a while ago. So when it, it's been... A, we shot it a year, over a year ago. and mm -hmm. So forgive me. But what, one of the... Um, the really bad guys with the uh uh who fought Sean. at the end, yeah, 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 like the, the 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 big bad at the end, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's huge. I couldn't get over how big he was. I was already kind of like, okay, Sean's big, but this guy was big, and yeah, um, yeah. but I think he's like a nurse during the day, like like the nicest person. <laughs> it's like, do you scare people? Are people have like are a social worker? He's like a social worker. Or a nurse, like something with dealing with people in really delicate situations, and and he wrestles at night. Like it's it's kind of I wanted to talk to him forever. I was like, I want to know your story. You're so cool, you know. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, he was great. Yeah, but I did have to. When it was one day, we all had to get changed in the same area. I was like, I don't want to take my shirt off in front of you guys because <laughs> I feel like a noodle, you know, because they were all so <laughs> buff. But uh, anyway. Yeah, Sean was great when I talked to him. Um, he is one of the nicest people I think I've talked to because uh, there's been so many people I've talked to. Michael, you're great too. Um, but to hear about his experiences too in you know, the film industry and coming in over here and hearing his backgrounds, I, th I feel like everybody in Here for Blood, they all have unique backgrounds that mend so well with everybody, um, especially seeing like how your character like really evolves at the end and you see like what you're doing and what you've been doing and seeing what all, everything else is. It's just a, a crazy film that everybody needs to see. And I'm so oh. happy that, you know, Screenbox got it because Screenbox is one of my favorite um, platforms right now to consume horror. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it was, yeah, that's no, really terrific news for sure. And uh, I, I was fortunate enough. I was one of the five cities that got a theatrical run, yeah, and you're I actually lucky. got the, I got the, I went yesterday, and caught it in theaters. You know, I, I, it also says a lot to Daniel uh, uh, and uh, uh, James and uh, the uh, the group that created the show that they that that they worked hard enough to get it seen. I mean, that that's a lot of work to 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 make people aware and to, and to you know I, I think that's that's um that that's a lot of work it doesn't just it doesn't just just happen you know uh so the kudos to them too for for making that happen yeah making it available to people yeah yeah for sure um there yeah. was actually one thing i brought up to i think james and sean because i for one i want to see a lot more of this and I had this really cool idea of getting it into a comic book. How would you feel of having your character as Gil portrayed in a comic book in like a different timeline or continuation of this movie? I'd love it. That'd be amazing. Sign yeah. me up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We need that we to get, happen. <laughs> yeah. If we get Demon Gil just coming out of the, the doors, just, <laughs> you know. Hell Love yeah. you tight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm just looking. I lost. Um, I'm just going blank on names. So, I, I forgive me. I, I, I um, it was. I, so I'm just looking this up because, um, 
it was fun watching people like like Jesse Buck who played Bernie who, who had that you know the amazing burn on his oh face. Oh my god! god. His oh, yes, physical language. He he uh, went to like clown school and stuff. So he had this amazing sort of like physical life. He was so funny. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and another thing I wanted to say. This is just random thoughts, but they're interesting. Um, Daniel's, uh, I think, fiance or wife. I'm not sure if they were married or not. Um, built that you know, that amazing doorway to the other world that Mm -hmm. is beautiful. Like they made it, it was like living in their, in their living room as they're making it for months. And it's such a beautiful piece. And, uh, you know, it really was a family, you know, Daniel and his dad, like found the money to do this. And like, it's, it, that's a kind of cool story in itself too. The sort of, they want to make a horror film. We're going to make it happen. You know, uh, find a writer, get, get we'll make props. <laughs> well, you know, they, 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 uh, the people, the special effects team were so good for, for an indie film. Like I, I, I was kind of blown away by the stuff they came in with. Like, the masks like were amazing. Face. Yeah. That's one thing I had to highlight because we're in an age right now where, you know, slasher killers have been around for a long time now. You know, and masks have been used in not just in horror movies, but in like superhero uh, movies or people drawing them. But seeing the masks that were made in this film, I feel like gave a breath air to fresh breath air to masks. I collect them. And these ones I need to collect because they were so awesome, even though there's one that's sort of like ghost face, like, you know, upside down, but right. so different. I'm like. I need to own these masks. But, but well, even, again, I th- I I'm I, I think that was also uh, Daniel's wife made those. I think she she made those ma- masks. I, I'm pretty sure. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, 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 really cool. And forgive me, I'm saying wife, but I think they're married. But I, I'm. That's <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, between but, the uh, between the masks and the I ch- I champion uh, practical effects over Same. anything man and when we got the screener for for here for blood and i watched it i was like holy crap like that dude that when he gets the coil on his face or the yeah. uh the demon that when they, they finally have to give this uh home invader something to fight tom abandon with you know because not that they're all getting their asses kicked yeah they give him yeah. the demon powers he takes his mask off i love that visual of how scary his face was underneath that scary mask. Like it they doubled down on it. It just, it yeah. was just amazing. And like Dustin was saying, all the masks, I like them because they're almost emotionless. Like they look porcelain. They, that's what makes them very effective, especially the upside down one, because 90% of their shots were overhead or something like to make the yeah. mask make sense. I I loved it, man. Like I loved everything yeah. that was visually, uh, scary in this movie was yeah. just yeah. awesome yeah 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 um and michael i want to ask you um because you're in this film kind of in and out um but for the scenes that you're in or even maybe scenes that you weren't in was it one that really stands out to you like that was probably my favorite to, uh, favorite to either be in or if you're on set at the time of being shot like was there one that you could pick out and be like i'm really happy well with that? i i really loved watching um the, the actor I just mentioned with the with the with the with the burn on his face. Yeah. I thought it was really fun watching Jesse Buck watching him do that because I got to watch him do that as we as he shot it and it was cracking me up. I thought he was fantastic. Uh, that's I think maybe that's my favorite memory uh, of 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 being on the set and watching him do it. Um, uh, I I thought that the the young actress uh, 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 Maya Maya yeah. Uh, who uh, was so good for such a kid, a little kid. She was fantastic. Um, like so grown up and like on top of everything. I, I thought, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought everything, everything was lots of fun. I, I, but if I had to pick one moment, just watching him navigate, like create that moment of getting burnt, I thought was, I thought was so funny. Yes. Yeah. Pops it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I loved it. 
So this yeah. is everybody's, um, you know, warning, <laughs> essentially, to go and watch this film because there's some really awesome practical effects. Really good dialogue. I think there's a lot of really cool one-liners that are in this film, too. Kind of, you know, harks back to, like, the old 80s films, like uh, like Predator. I was telling Sean that this reminds me of, like, Predator with all the one-liners that Arnold was saying back then. It's like he kind of just took that and put it right in here and did his own twist on it. Um, and then to, to see you um, at the end... Uh, doing all these crazy things with these cult members. Because going into this film, I didn't really wa uh, read anything that Screambox was telling me about this film. I thought it was just going to be just a, a home invasion, nothing supernatural going on with it at all. And then, you know, getting introduced to you and, and the other characters and be like, okay, so they're going to come back and something's going to be happening. Something did happen, but then it was way more than what I thought it was. And then right, to see yeah. what you were mixed into and be like, okay, so you were the one that kind of wanted to start this thing to get people in there <laughs> to, you know, make all these crazy things happen. And then you have D. Snyder, who's voicing the head, oh, which I boy. think is amazing as well. Yeah, yeah. It's great, great, great stuff. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, it was fun when I read it for the first time, like like reading when I got the part and got to read the script. I was like, oh, God, this is really funny, funny writing and lots of big surprises where you don't see that's coming. You don't see that's coming. And um, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely cool. And, uh, you know, at that same time, I was shooting uh, Cabinet of Curiosity. So, oh, really? James, yeah. James, who wrote the show, wrote the script very kindly, because at that point I didn't drive i i now drive but i didn't drive then so he he would come for like it's a long drive it's like two hours from or more from where he was where they were shooting maybe three hours and come wow. and pick me up from, uh, from the set of that and bring me to london ontario to shoot this and go back and forth the poor guy i was like you're not are you sleeping <laughs> but but <laughs> no but i had a, what was no but what was really great about it is i did get to talk to him a lot and so because i i really do think he's a smart writer and and that was a that was kind of a nice highlight of the whole thing too, because most of the time you work on on in film and TV you don't get a lot of time to hang out with anybody. Um, it's very different than a play. In a play, you you know you spend a cut like a few weeks with the whole group of people and you really bond. But in TV and movies and stuff, you show up for the days you're supposed to film and and you usually just hang out in your waiting area until they come get you. You shoot it and you go home, so you don't get as much time to connect with people. Yeah. So those drives, I was really glad I got to connect with him, and and I and I did get one drive up to, and I got to really get to know Jesse Buck. Uh, the, the, That's awesome. Yeah, for a little bit, which was the where I said so was the only reason I know about him uh, going to clown clown school in France, and you know, I didn't know any of that stuff. So that yeah, it really of, shows too with how he can act on screen. Like he's he needs to be in more roles like that. Very quirky and crazy because what he can do is oh it's amazing and there's yeah. a clip out there that i think everybody has seen at this part uh at this point is when he gets his hand chopped off in the shed dude which is so <laughs> funny yeah. <laughs> yeah totally it's it's like this poor guy like each time he like just shows up on screen out of nowhere there's sean roberts they're getting ready to just to do something <laughs> to him i'm like this this poor guy throughout the whole movie but um before this were you a fan of wrestling at all or are you a fan now or is it uh, uh good question you know I, I i i never watched it i i grew up yeah. you know when wrestling was really big when i was a kid so i sure you know, you know but i don't i didn't really watch it um i really i really admire what those people can do especially now that i've had to do a little bit of fighting in theater you know you realize oh my god this is so much work and it's mm -hmm. nothing to the extent that they do so uh, the watching watching the skill it takes to do that and sell it and not hurt the person you're actually pretending to hurt um it's pretty impressive um yeah like the worst i've ever had to do is like a really long sword fight and i felt like we'd i rehearsed that sword fight more than the play like you know and by the end i was like can the understudies do it <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's so tiring <laughs> yeah and that yeah. was that's probably my favorite part though is when uh the boyfriend that's killed in the car goes yeah you're just a fake wrestler and i'm like oh boy i know what's about to happen right now man like like tell yeah. tell them to their face is fake and watch what happens yeah, that, man that was a fun character to the the boy yeah the I, I really loved as an actor i know and i thought he was so funny stephen love who played the pizza delivery guy yeah i mm -hmm. thought that was just a really fun 
he was so funny. <laughs> in that, in that small, really short yeah. scene, he was so so funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He really took a small like an opportunity to make something memorable. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, is... Here's a good question um, that that I wanted to answer to, because it seems like most of these characters that you've been playing as of late have kind of a twist to them. You know, they they can be a little sinister, but they can be kind of quirky at the same time. Are we going to be seeing more sinister roles for you? You starting to like those roles? <laughs> yeah, I love them. No, I love them. I, I seem to lately get hired more for bad guys than good guys. Um, I don't know. At least more believable as a jerk, I guess. But uh, <laughs> but it is fun playing a jerk. It's fun playing like, yeah, they're actually more fun than nice people. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All yeah. Right. Last year, I, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's. Hell yeah. There you go. I'm excited for that. I, I really want to know, like, what else you're going to be doing and whatnot. If there's anything that you can say right now, are you working on anything? Not right now. Is everything really slowed down because of the strikes? Yeah. Um, sure. So there, everything, you know, most things in Toronto just shut down. Um, there are a couple Canadian things, but most of it was most of the stuff that shoots here is American, and it just closed down. Um, uh, no, I, I, I was, I'm on another show that's on TV now, just for, like in two episodes but playing a bad guy uh in <laughs> yeah. um, fellow travelers which is a mini series on paramount plus i think oh i'll have to go check and, that uh, out yeah and it's it's really it's the the right man who wrote um i'm being i, I names just go out the window there's it's so many people, names <laughs> yeah who wrote uh Phil, philadelphia uh, it, it, he it's he so he uh he was the um the showrunner okay. and and uh and it's really it's really well done and i play an asshole and yeah it was fun to play an asshole again <laughs> awesome <laughs> man yeah. i'm excited uh dustin is there any uh last questions that you want to throw no i think i uh asked what i asked and got what i got awesome <laughs> um, yeah, Michael, I mean, I think I ran through everything as well. This was a, a great chat to, you know, get to know you and, you know, hear about your background and, and, and theater and musicals and now stepping into horror and being more, um, bad guys, which I think is great. <laughs> I really, I, I really say, like, like you in that role, but I do want to oh, see nice. you in some, you know, nice roles as well, where you're not going to be doing <laughs> anything bad. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah. We'll see what happens Un until the end when the twist happens. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> the entire yeah. time you've been good and then the twist yeah. happens yeah um <laughs> but this was amazing and and dustin thank you for sitting on here michael it was it was a pleasure talking to you man yeah, this was great place. all right well thanks for having me yeah thank you for being on and everybody go check out here for blood it's on screen box right now um go check out all of michael's other stuff go check out all the chuckies he's in all the other numerous shows that he's been in if you go on his imdb it's a giant list of things so you're you're busy and that's great uh, i'm okay. glad to you know see that with actors because there's always some sometimes there's a lull there like right now you're just saying that you know things are shut down but now you're starting to get into more things and i'm always happy to see that but michael thank you so much for being here man it means a lot thank you thank you well, take right. care guys we'll see everybody right, next you. time thank you bye-bye bye-bye